you got a little bit of trouble. You knocked off a game one time that was uh, a little more connected than we, you thought. Was it bad intel or you didn't give a shit or a little bit of No, more? it was bad. I don't lie. It was bad intel. We didn't know. And then we found out afterwards we had to give all the stuff back anyway. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, it was bad, you know, because then they don't know did our people send them to do that? You know, then it becomes like a thing like that. Well, did they, did they know, you know, what is he crazy? Disrespecting me. So it was like, we were only 20 years old. You know, we were young and crazy. Me and my partner, Bobby at the time. So we didn't even know. We pissed up the guy and everything took him for like 50 K uh, wow. uh, masterpiece Rolex. And um, it could have been a real nightmare for us, you know? So you were obviously valued enough that whoever your upline was, Ronnie G, whoever, they sat for you and they took care of you. Cause if you like, like, here's the thing, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna shoot straight Gene. Like I've interviewed you and, and you're, you're like very polarizing people like great interview. We love the guy. And then I get like email nasty grams threatening me. <laughs> you know, it's like, Whoa, wait a second. You know, but one of the things is if you were nobody, why would somebody sit down for you? You know what I mean? So at least at the very least in that life. Well, I mean, everyone, to... everyone, everyone knows that, um, you know, I was with people and I was supposed to become a member and all that. They all know I was running around, yeah. you know, doing that stuff. And I'll, like I said, if you look at it, right, Tom, think about this. All the ex-mob guys that are out here, why yeah. am I so popular if they think I'm fake? Think yeah. about it, Tom. Yeah. If they think I'm fake, why am I so more popular than the other ones? So, uh, Gene, I, um, you know, as a tiny American kid growing up in New Jersey, um, my, my mom made it a point to you know, keep us away from Cosa Nostra, people around that life. Um, sometimes it's inevitable, but it happened where she annexed us, if you will. Um, my aspirations were, you know, hey, get educated or, 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 or you know, get start my own business or, or get a vocation or or get a job, you know, corporate. You know, when you were younger, you know, in the life, what were some of your goals when you were longer, younger? What did you foresee for yourself? To be a gangster. <laughs> oh, well, like, did you want to be a made guy? Did you want to be a cap? Yeah, you... I wanted to be a made guy. I wanted to be a uh, runner area. I wanted to, you know, do all that stuff. And um, at first it was sports, but then that got played out. And I wanted to be a street guy full full time. So as you're doing it and as you get older, is it something that, like, it gets more and more exciting? Or did you start to be like, oh, shit, you know what? Like, I'm in need. Yeah, I'm not sure. It was, it, it was the easy money. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. all want the money. That's what everybody's chasing. If anyone tells you differently, they're lying. Most people just want it for the money. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was there for, you know? I, I was I was always interested in your story, not just because I interviewed you, but I was interested, interested in your story because you kind of caught the real last of the heyday. You had the car. You guys were at it. I don't know, probably Limelight, whatever it was big back then in the city. Give us some of the trappings that went along with being kind of the last of the Mohegans and wise guy in Howard Beach. Right. So when we were coming up, on every, every area, the FBI always said they loved coming to Howard Beach because... It was just flooded with mob, you know what I mean? So anywhere we went, parks, anywhere, it was still mafioso out, you know? Yeah. Howard Beach was flooded. And yeah. Ozone Park and everything still. So growing up, it was, you know, loan sharks everywhere, sports betting, everyone had an office. You know, it was still like that. It yeah. kind of died 2014, I want to say. 2015, yeah. that's when it really went downhill. They locked up Vinny for the Latanza heist case. Yeah. Then afterwards, they had my case. And they kind of crushed the Bonanno family. It was a wrap in the Queens fraction, you know what I mean? So coming up, and then the Gambinos all got crushed in 2011 when they locked up the 160 guys. You know what I mean? So the Howard yeah. Beach Ozone Park was wiped out. But for the most part before that, from like 2002 to like 2014, it was still flooded with the mob everywhere, you know? And, that, and that's pretty late. And interesting enough is I had Frank Fiordolino on, and he was um, an associate with the Bananos. He was from the other side, hung out a lot of the Sicilians in Knickerbocker Avenue. So he's kind of like the before Gene, you know, before the Bananas 2000, you're the after. But the but the Bananas had a good run. Messino built up, rebuilt the family prior to flipping. If you can kind of talk about, you know, the pre-Messino and post-Messino era. Right. So with my book, we had a good story now with Joe Messino because my boss, mm -hmm. Vinny, wanted to rob him after he became a rat. Because oh. we, we knew all the gold bars were in the house. Because we had my, uh, one of the guys in our crew his friend installed the safe. So we knew where the safe was. They they took that story out of my book. I was furious. They edited my book really bad without my permission. But um, um, they, they took 100 pages out. Me and Lou were very upset about it. This you got to hire me. I would have negotiated you. Listen, me, uh, me, me, me and Lou did this book very well. And this lady just decided yeah. to take out 100 pages of my book. But yeah. everyone still loved the book. But there was yeah. a lot of stuff taken out. Yeah. And the Messino story was one of them. We were trying to um home invade him. And we were going to take the gold bars out of the house. Oh, shit. We have to so, be ratted. We were going in that house, but then we got word that the feds took them already. Wow. So we didn't go. 
Yeah, that was that, that was a whole thing about Messina. No, yeah, like I said, he had a, he had a big run. Uh, he was the, the Don, you know, whatever you want to call. But um, my oh, I always say this in every interview. I yeah. don't feel they should have gave him a deal. Um, I feel that's bullshit. I feel like um, he was ordering all the murders. He was getting people killed for no reason. Yeah. Uh, he was doing grimy shit too. And then you give this guy a deal on telling on people that he ordered to do this stuff. No, nah, I don't. I don't agree with that. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. So, so when you were when you were, let's call it 2000. When did when did he flip Messina? I forget. Oh five, I think he came out. He was bad. Okay, so you caught very little of the Messina era, but they were very strong. So well, he were, liked Ronnie G a lot. He did. Okay. Yeah, Ronnie used to bring him pastries once a week to his house. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I probably yes. some else too, but fair enough. Got it. Yes. So he liked Ronnie G. So you're kind of on the the right team, if you will. Post Messino, you know, hated I, Vinny though. He, he didn't. Hated Vinny and Sarah with a passion. Really? Yes. And Vinny hated him, yes. Interesting. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I knew every day. Because um, I always get fascinated by like the change in leadership and how does it affect the whole organization. Post Messino, what did it mean to you? Was it meaningless? Was it a new regime? Was it better or worse? What did post Messino mean to Gene Barella during that period? I mean, like I said, we really didn't know him. But when he went bad, the Bernardo family was they were, I like I I think I said this before. They were trying to say that anyone got made under him wasn't recognized. Get reverse, right? Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, people flipping out about that. And then we had like so many different bosses till Tommy D came on. Till Mike, uh, they lay appointed this guy Tommy D. Yeah. And Mike, you know, is the active boss right now. You know, he's a serious guy. And um, the the family was a mess. And then it rebuilt. It did rebuild like in 2010, 2011. Then we were good yeah. till 2014. That was it. It was over. Wow. Yeah. So, so, you, so you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You have your your mob career. You're you're doing some work and that kind of stuff. 